In 2009, a man in L'Aquila, Italy, saw flickering lights dancing above the stone street. He immediately knew what to do and moved his family to a safer place. Only seconds later, a massive 8.3 magnitude earthquake hit the whole region. His knowledge of the strange lights saved his and his family's lives. So what are those mysterious warnings? For centuries, people interpreted the lights as something otherworldly. The scientific community didn't take them seriously, just put them down to a false recollection, a mind trick, or pure imagination. Then came the invention of photography, and more and more evidence of the earthquake lights appeared. With the introduction of surveillance cameras and smartphones, the amount of evidence grew enormously. Now the connection was obvious. Lights appear, and earthquake hits. So experts finally started taking it seriously and started digging for the truth. They found historical records of these earthquake lights, EQLs for short, dating back to the 17th century. There were also reports of a faint rainbow before the great San Francisco earthquake and lights before the 1811 tremors in Missouri. Even after years of research, to this day, geologists are still not fully sure what the source of the lights is. But they have recognized five types of them. Bright flashes that light up the sky, looking like storm lightning or a strong camera flash. Rays in the sky that can look like light columns. Different sized flames that come through the ground. Diffuse glows over the mountains. And slow moving balls of light that can be misinterpreted as ball lightning. Another equally little understood atmospheric phenomenon. These are literally balls of lightning that can float and explode, leaving a sulfuric odor behind. But unlike ball lightning, these spherical EQLs seem to be harmless. But with all of these types of lights, experts can't know how exactly they're connected to earthquakes. They don't only show up before one hits. Some have been reported during and after earthquakes. They can also appear with other phenomena like meteorite crashes, volcanic eruptions, or auroras. For now, scientists can only come up with theories to explain the unexplainable. One of the recent ones claimed the lights were electric lines being broken during an earthquake. But this theory doesn't explain how the phenomena was observed hundreds or even thousands of years ago. Like the ancient Chinese tale of dragon-looking clouds appearing in the sky as a warning of an upcoming quake or how an ancient Roman historian reported huge flame-like lights bursting out just before a huge earthquake occurred. Another theory suggested it was escaping gas. During an earthquake, the underground rocks expand and shrink under pressure and heat. This opens and closes small spaces between them. Different gases make their way through these new openings. Radon, for example, can get released during seismic activities. It can ionize the air, making it electrically charged. But radon doesn't do it enough to create bright sparks of light. One of the most accepted theories is that it might be from electricity traveling up from underground. When underground igneous rocks, ones that form from magma deep within the Earth, are under stress, they release ionized or electrically charged oxygen. It travels through the surface and up into the atmosphere, where it creates a localized electric field. This also explains why only certain regions have reported them. Earthquake lights have been observed in Italy, Greece, France, Germany, China, and parts of South America. Those areas have a lot of drops or ravines. That allows igneous rocks to gradually move up toward the surface. Those kinds of rocks generate an electrical charge more easily than other types. And as they get closer to the surface, that charge is released flowing up and ionizing the air. This electrified plasma in the air creates magnificent natural light shows. Those particular rocks and the right conditions exist in less than 1% of earthquakes in the world. That also explains why the phenomenon is so rare. To prove that theory, scientists filled containers with mixtures of glass particles, powders, and plastic discs and watched them move around past each other during stress. They were sort of mimicking the way sands, rocks, and other underground materials move in an earthquake zone. They soon noticed an electrical voltage develop when the containers are disturbed. 
They recreated it in the lab, but still don't quite understand why it does this. It's still just a theory and a topic of debate. Many don't even think EQLs exist. Even so, geologists are working on a forecasting system to alert people ahead of time of an earthquake coming. And earthquake lights were recently included as one of the predicting factors. So, what do experts recommend you do next? If you're home, drop to the floor with the first tremors and take cover. Sturdy tables are the best option, since it can protect you from falling pieces of other furniture. Stay there until the shaking stops. If there's no table around, drop to the floor and cover your face and head with your arms. Try to get to an inside corner of the building you're in. Stay away from glass, windows, outside walls, or any furniture that can fall on you. Don't stand in a doorway during the earthquake. This is a long-held myth and is only true when it comes to a metal, load-bearing doorway. If you're in bed when the quake strikes, stay in bed, don't run away. Cover your head with a pillow. Check the area around your bed for any hazards – heavy light fixtures, paintings, mirrors, or shelves above the bed or the walls near it – are a no-go. After the shaking has stopped and you feel safe, you can leave the building. Just don't use the elevator. Take the stairs and follow the authorities' guidelines. Now, if you're outside during an earthquake, stay where you are, but move away from lights, poles, buildings, wires, and trees. Stay there until the shaking stops. If you're in a car, find a safe open spot to park, far from buildings, trees, or bridges. Tune in to the local radio and check if any roads were damaged. In the worst-case scenario, you might get trapped in your house under debris. The best thing you can do is to stay still. Don't move around because it can stir up the dust and prevent you from breathing. Cover your mouth with a handkerchief or a piece of your clothes. Rescuers will come shortly. They probably already know what happened. If you hear them, don't shout. Try to tap on a metal pipe or a wall. This way, they'll be able to find you faster and you won't waste precious oxygen. Remember, not all lights in the sky are earthquake lights. But correctly identifying them and being aware of and ready for an upcoming earthquake can save your life.